So welcome Shauna to meet me in the mushroom. I am so honored to to have you here today to have a little curious conversation about your medicine and your magic. Thank you, Kathy. I am very excited for a conversation today. Looking forward to it. So for those of you that are familiar with Shauna, I'm sure many of you are, and for those of you that are not so familiar, Shauna is a visionary medicine woman and she is a poet and an author. She's also one of my mentors and I'm just really excited to see where this conversation goes today. So Shauna was sharing with me that on the first of the year, the first of January, she did some self-exploration work or initiatory work herself and moved beyond the veil and when Shauna is in her visionary medicine state she receives direct transmission or direct communion from the beings that she interacts with and they communicate with through her in the form of rhyme and this is a really ancient practice uh, very well documented in ancient druidic lore and auricular work how the seers would go into these altered states and speak in poetry and prose and riddle so i'm inviting shauna to to share a little bit about this transmission that came through you at the beginning of the year okay thank you kathy so yes i when i am called I go into the realms only when I'm I'm called and normally I'm hosting these one-on-one -on -one retreats at my home and and someone is here for 5 days it's very deep intimate work and and I love it but it leaves me very little time for my own exploration so maybe once or twice a year so I'm taking the first few months of this year off from retreats to write my next book and 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 also open the space for more to come in and so I was called to the mushroom on the 1st of January of this year. It's interesting because I, I, I realized, oh, but the second is a new moon. I should go in the new moon. But it came in, no, 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 go in at the darkest time right before that phase begins. So that is what I did. And I will also preface by saying that I this year I am entering my second Saturn return. And astrologically, anyway, 2022 is supposed to be like a humdinger. Like it's going to be just insane. Uh, but what the Saturn return is about is Saturn return returns every 29.5 years. So when we're around 29, often life is really stirred up and we're either changing careers or starting something new or entering a new relationship or ending, whatever it is, Saturn rules structure. And and so it's about, you know, the, the sort of heavier things we don't necessarily want to sort of visit. Uh, but Saturn is a great, great teacher and uh, and deeply wise as 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 difficult as Saturn can be. And so second Saturn return, I've also been sort of doing a life review and it really started happening last summer. And, and I can be very hard on myself. So I'm just being vulnerable, sharing that because they speak to this a little bit in the beginning of this. There's a little kind of personal stuff in here. Uh and, and when I take the mushroom, I don't actually listen to music. I don't want any, any outside, anything other than the sounds of nature. I want to go in, in, in to this mystery right in here. And, and so uh, in I go, there goes Poppy, my kitty. And I lie down and I have a digital recorder and I just kind of turn it on and let it be because when I go in, then they speak through me and it is all in perfect rhyme. And then if I speak to them, I'm speaking in rhyme. And so it's, it's quite wondrous. And so I'll begin. Daughter, to yourself be kind. We see worry in your mind. We see fretting and regret. That deer is a sticky net. You know you cannot change the past. To sail ships takes experience vast. Accomplishments and mistakes too. All that lives inside of you. That is quite the cauldron's brew. It does inform and also stews. Daughter, you must pick and choose carefully what you hold and lose. 
Ride that wave you see so clearly. We will hold it for you dearly. You will walk this year with grace. With every step, you'll see her face. Daughter, look around you now. It's hard to imagine how, but this weaving just wove itself. That is the magic of the elf. Magic they don't want you to see, and so they've changed the scenery. But we are always just below, and what we carry so few know. To certain ones we do bestow the knowledge of how good seeds grow. A gentle journey today's ride. We'll hold you fast while we're inside. We are around you and below. Just call to us and we'll bestow the ways in which to stay in flow and ensure that awareness grows. We'll help you get out of their system. We'll say it's about to fall. You are finding the true wisdom. It is clear you've heard the call. Forces strong will see you through. We'll help you with all you do. This is how much we love you. You still cannot believe it's true. It's quite the spell they've cast on you. It will unbind. It will do so soon. This is why at this dark moon we come in with greatest stealth to ensure you regain health. For this passage you won't miss. You will seal it with a kiss. We share with you at this time. So much we'll tell you through this rhyme. The wise old ones who run this place know well when it's time to face the music. So your ship you'll clean, ready set for the next scene. Upon this great stage they call Earth. For this new scene's about a birth. The dark old wizards tried to quell by poisoning the ancient well. But daughter, no, we've studied longer. In that college, we grew stronger. We've the antidote for that. Will cause them all to more than scat. Like that word, dear, thought you might. They will go down with a fight. You know they underestimate the ancient ones with wisdom great. We will right what's torn asunder. We will heal what they have plundered. We're what you call cleanup crew. The experts that know what to do. You wonder why we talk to you. Daughter, you doubt your own value. Hear us now. That spell must break. You will do all that it takes. Not easy, but you've got this one. You have good teachers. We are the ones. And we'll ensure you learn this lesson. For you, dear, school's still in session. Let us gently filter in threads to create a different spin. So, daughter, feed the ones with ears. Help them to know that they can steer their vessels to a place that's calm, where they can find the healing balm. That balm is a different brew, not the kind that sorcerers blew. This one, dear, spelled with an L. This balm makes all of you well. And then I said, How can we help these poor lost people? In their minds they've become sheeple. It's not right to hack the mind. It's unjust and most unkind. Let us build a frequency that helps the blind begin to see. Please let's help them realize and recognize the thin disguise of rulers who pretend to care while holding earth within a snare. The beauty here they want to steal. They wish to make our people kneel to these dark masters who cause strife and seek to control all of life. And so good fellowship of light Ancient ones who come when night is darkest when so few can see, I call humbly to thee. Lead my people into reason. Expose our leaders for their treason. Unhook their talons from this place. What they have done is a disgrace. Remove them, please. Do what is needed. Help the wisdom to be seated. Counsel of the wise ones there. Please have ears for the despair. I know your wisdom's helped before. Let us give the lost an oar and a map that they can see to help them get out to get them out of misery a lamp to help them find their way through and beyond the wretched fray let us weave fabric of light illuminating this dark night the blind aided by those of sight we will help their ships to right dear counsel of the wise and free please give earth's people eyes to see so many of them are good souls and they deserve to become whole so like a lawyer I intervene, for what I see is just obscene. And so with humble heart I ask, I know that this is quite the task. Good folk here, stripped in evil ways, and I can see how they're displayed. What passage is this we must ride? However will we get our stride? 
I call a very special weave, one that the sorcerers won't conceive. With humbleness, I ask you, please, to bring an end to cough and sneeze. It's quite the spell that they have spun. I know that they have just begun. And they said, well, things can end quite suddenly. Next thing you know, you stand there free. A whole new world beneath your feet, new possibilities to greet. And so, dear, trust the old ones wise. Of course, we can hear well your cries. Don't think we know not what to do. We're expanded through and through. Ages turn like sturdy wheels. So understand, at times, it feels like dooms upon you, dark with death. Just when you think it's your last breath, then suddenly the fire's stoked. And that light that you invoked arrived in time to greet the day, to cast the dark-winged ones away. Trust in the fates, daughter who knows, all those worries to and fro, it's now time to let them go. The seeds are planted, they will grow. They're in you and many more. We'll only say that what's in store will defy any spell they cast. They underestimate the vast proportions of this earthly dwelling, this land that they think they're selling. Daughter, no, good seeds we sow. At this time, they'll ably grow. It may not seem so in your eyes. The best spells, dear, are a surprise. This is a game. We'll use that word, though really, dear, it's quite absurd. We'll say it's old, but that's not right. For that would make it seem so trite. Just know, daughter, that you're a player. As your girls would say, a slayer. You will weave a web of gold. And daughter, what that web will hold. And you are not the only weaver. As you know, many conceivers, as they say, it's two or more who can create what is in store. And so a new year's upon you. And this one brings a mighty brew that will revive more than a few to fight for what is right and true. For what's to be and what will come will ensure that the spell's undone. And more will recognize as false the ones in charge who have no pulse. Daughter, this passage will be short. It will not be your escort. Many folk will come to see. Then you'll create what is to be. That is done when minds are clear. The only way that you can steer. We know that they've clouded the mind, and we can see what stands behind the curtain on their stage of woe. They represent a mighty foe. At some point, though, a dam must break, and those who've caused it will forsake. What's been withheld will erupt and overtake all the corrupt creations those dark ones have wrought. When that dam breaks, they just cannot prevent that flow of information. It will be known by every nation. True knowledge will save the day, and reason will again hold sway. So, daughter dear, you caught the train, or it caught you, and our refrain is trust the choreography, and spend more time beneath the trees, and know that we are always with you, and we will give more than a clue. In fact, we'll make it obvious, and more good minds will then discuss the many possibilities of what can be when minds are free. Okay. Well. Yes. Well. Because, of course, I do worry. And and so I go in there and I'm, I go in there always with humble heart. I'm seeking wisdom. I don't have a quote unquote intention. I gave that up a long time ago because it sweeps you away anyway. And so I just say, all right, this is my heart. This is me. And I'm seeking wisdom. Please, please teach me, you know, and, um, and uh, and then I do go in. I'm like, we need your help, you guys. <laughs> so she's like, That's a mess. <laughs> really, what what can be done? And uh, a little more eloquent <laughs> in when I'm in the medicine. But yeah. yeah, I mean, for me, what's really beautiful is your ability to stand so firm in your expression of your magic and to be embodied with that and you know to be able to come on here to publish your books to be respected within the, the the global community for the work that you do and to be able to be a woman of magic who weaves magic and practices magic and i think that's a really 
essential message that we can get out there because I think there are a lot of women who have this capacity and maybe don't feel safe that they can live, work, breathe, live in the fullness of that authentic expression and, and, and be successful in many ways and be accepted. So for me, that, that to hear you speak to this degree and to share this level of a transmission with me and everybody who's watching this, and to feel the truth in it and just that that for me is is so special oh, thank you well i'll tell you the the biggest secret with all of that is to not you can't care what people think and i, I have been an outlier the better part of my life and it was excruciatingly painful when i was young but now i am so oh my god i'm beyond grateful in many, many, many ways now. But what it does is it frees you up when you are no longer dancing to the eyes of others and you can really explore your gifts, you know, and uh, it just, it, it frees you up and you can learn so much more that way because you're not concerned with kind of what the outside world thinks. And also, I I see the world is so dysfunctional because it is and and we all of us have been led astray and you know there's a few in charge who who are playing god and and who really i don't even think they see us as human and uh and so in any case so 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 in other words I, I've always said, if you just look to nature, follow the cycles of nature, follow the teachings of nature and the wisdom of the ancients who thought very differently than we did. I mean, all you need to do is read a little Parmenides or, you know, Plato or whatever. And, you know, there's no, that's not like reading, right? And it, 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 you just realize, my God, these people treasured truth, beauty, and the good. And, uh, philosophy wisdom knowledge truth right and 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 so i don't know that has spoken to me and 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 encouraged me and then i just share authentically and and i'm not bound by you know i'm not sort of licensed i don't have a phd you know i'm not an academic i'm not bound by any of that so i also feel you know I can speak freely, not act a fool, obviously, but just, you know, I'm free to speak and to share. And then also then, you know, it's this is work has always been for those with eyes to see and ears to hear. Right. That's very old. Yeah. Something else that came up while you were um, reflecting on the transmission for me when you speak about the the underworld you mentioned the underworld and you mention these beings around and below and i think what is what well, i'd like to hear your reflections on this there has been a um a distortion around you know the forest, the underworld, that has been portrayed as something that is evil and dark. And that is that is something that has been put in place to sort of distort and, and, and take people away, take women away from those spaces. And I'd love to hear a little bit of a reflection. I mean, we understand when there's energies at play, you mentioned, you know, darker darker sorcerers and whatnot but we're not speaking about that when we speak to the underworld or the other world or going into the earth and I'd love to hear some reflections from you on what that is what is the underworld and the she or the fae or whatever it is that you are communicating with okay well uh there is uh oh what is it a book by uh Lewis Spence um on the fairy Okay, the title just escapes me, 
But he spoke of the she, S-I-D-H-E, which we know is the Irish word for the, the fairy or the people of the mounds. And and he said that to the Irish, that that was that was the, both the, the Tua de Danan, which were the quote unquote sort of mythical race of, of beings, people very, very high, uh, highly learned in, in magic and uh, who peopled Ireland for a long time until the Milesians came. And then there was a war and then uh, the Tua de Danan lost and they chose to go beneath the surface of, of Ireland. And so they're part of the underworld. But also, uh, Lewis Spence wrote that that also included the ancestors and, and, and then other beings as well, right? And so it is quite a, it, I mean, it's a whole other world. And, and it is a world that we can travel to through high trance states. And of course, the mushroom is for a long time, of course, been associated with that that kind of of travel, and so it's a place of shapeshifters. Obviously, you know, in shamanism, uh, there you you would travel to the underworld for soul retrieval, that kind of thing, to 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 uh, rescue lost souls, and also to receive help from assist helping spirits there as well, and and. Uh, depending on the tradition, some traditions talk about nine worlds, some talk about three, but you have essentially the lower world, the middle world, which is where we are, and then the the upper world. And so when I go into the mushroom states, and I think a number of people, you know, they find themselves in this sort of lower world place. And to me, it's like, it's like there's the surface story, and then there was what lies beneath. And I've always my whole life been curious about, well, what's beneath? What's going on? Let's take this even deeper. And so, of course, then I would end up in this kind of experience where, indeed, we go deeper into that sort of beneath the surface uh, world. And it is there where, I, I will say also, it is not without its dangers, just as the middle world is not without its, you know, I mean, as above, so below. And, and, and this is also why practitioners of old, whether they were seers or witches or shamans. I hate that word, witch, at this point. What I like is is weaver. I think of weaver, weavers. Um, but, you know, they knew a lot more and, and in terms of sort of what does lie be beneath the surface. And they all would have some kind of, of spirit assist, of, of a protector, a guardian, that kind of thing. And so, and that happened to me early on in the mushroom when I had this experience with White Owl, and I wrote about that in my book, Love and Spirit Medicine. And White Owl has been my guardian and guide ever since. And Owl, anyway, is the ally of the seer. The owl can see in the darkness, so they can see what others can't see. They can see what others won't see. And and they're also about wisdom and higher knowledge. And so it is helpful to traverse, especially if you're going to be doing this on a regular basis, you know, that you have some kind of an assist. And I would say also kind of your wits ab about you as well. And then in you go. And, and again, seeking wisdom, uh, there are many beings. What I have, it's my understanding over the 10 years that I, I'm apprenticed very much to the mushroom, to these teachers, that this was something more widely practiced a long time ago. And, and, I would also say, of course, that people wouldn't necessarily even need to go on the mushroom. Like, I mean, it was different. Societies were different back then. And there was, of course, uh, an understanding that everything had a kind of soul or spirit. And certainly to the ancient Gaels or the Celts, even the, the sword or the dagger that the smith made for you had a soul. It, you know, so, so even objects themselves you know, were held as dear and particularly something like that because, you know, and a cauldron, that kind of thing. That was a big deal to have those those items. And and also they were made with such artistry. I mean, each piece could be in the Smithsonian, like just the level of, of artistry and detail is is breathtaking. And so in any case, so yeah, they understood you could communicate. The trees had spirits, you know, and often you could you could, you know, you'd find them within the roots of the trees and below and 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 so, yeah, those worlds are, they've never gone away. Our minds have been led astray over time. And I would say now it's just simply dismissed and mocked. Never mind getting punished for that kind of thing. Now you're just 
you know, written off as a whack job or, you know, just it's all laughter. And and again, see, you have to, if you put yourself out there like I have, I don't consider myself, it's funny, people probably love, but I don't consider myself woo because I'm, I'm very grounded. I also study natural law. Like I value greatly both the mystical and the practical. And also when I studied some of the the ancient Druid seeresses, there isn't a whole lot on the Druids as we know that was written, they're Roman accounts. But those women were deeply learned and they were learned in law. And the Romans would be scandalized when, uh, just aghast, when a, a Druid woman was brought in to judge a major matter or, or put a judgment in on, on war. They were like, what are you doing? You know, and so these women were deeply, deeply learned, highly in magic as well as, as law, which to me, law is life. You know, law, L, land, A, air, W, water, land, air, water. That's law. Life is law. But this connection, the reason why we are in the mess we are in, in every way, is we've lost that connection. And and I went in in May of last year. I have a beautiful beautiful poetic transmission from that time and I was speaking with the fairy queen and when we were talking about what is going on she said something just one line the consequence when one forgets it's just that simple it's just that simple and that that the consequence when one forgets I'm I find it really intriguing how I mean, yourself, myself included, and some other women that I know that are actively working with, with mushroom medicine and um, if you want to use the word shamanistic, you know, for, for universal usage, um, in a shamanistic sense or in a magical sense, it is really that. It's a really magical practice that we seem to be revitalizing here. And it's unique onto itself. It's completely different from any of the other, you know, obviously it is. And that's why we are trying to reclaim this medicine because ayahuasca is not our medicine. You know, we are not Peruvian or Amazonian peoples and um, San Pedro is not our, our medicines. But the transmissions and the teachings that are coming through the mushroom is leading, in in my experience, those women... Um, and men, but for me, it's predominantly women that I know, really calling them into working in this highly magical environment with, you know, the, the, this traversing with the realms and these beings and the language and the, the, the oracular states that it evokes in those of us that are working with it as well. And, and that's it. It's like a, recla a reclamation now to help bring back that memory. And mushroom is such an amazing medicine to to be the, yeah, allow us back into that realm. Yes, yes, it will surprise you. And, and that's the thing too. I mean, every journey you can't predict, this isn't public school, <laughs> you know, in you go, you have no idea what you're going to encounter. And I see every journey as a kind of initiation. You go in as initiate and all you know is sort of what you know and 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 then in you go, hopefully in total trust and, and hopefully in a, a right set and setting and and a voice or a being, whatever sort of comes out of nowhere. And my goodness, I mean, I've heard story after story after story of people just completely not expecting what happened. And then it changes them forever and it changes the way that they regard nature. Which is so important. Not for everyone, unfortunately, <laughs> it doesn't work with everyone, but a lot, a lot of people, right? I mean, it really, it opens them in a way that would not be possible in, in, uh, in any other way. And, and I want to also say in terms of the realms of fairy and elfin, which I think is really what the mushroom is about. I had someone say, you know, I went in and, and I, I didn't feel the fairy at all. You know, it was all about, you know, what I had to work on and this kind of thing. It was really hard and difficult. And I said to them, that is the fairy. <laughs> like, they're not these little Tinkerbell things. It's like, okay, sometimes you're in this just wondrous experience. And other times in their wisdom, they're showing you what's, what's broken or what, you know, what you've got to work on. And, and it's not pleasant. 
this is about wisdom, I think, at the end of the day. You know, going in and coming out a little bit wiser, a little bit more tuned in. And and certainly my first year of what ended up being mo- monthly mushroom journeys, it just kind of happened that way. But often towards the end of the journey, it would be more of like a teaching, like, okay, you could have couched that differently, or you could have done that, you know, you need to, and I would come out of the journey, and I would make that right. So this medicine can also make you a better person. And and so you're working with these intelligences that are just deep and profound and ancient and very much a mystery. And that's another thing we have to really respect is this is a great mystery and it's just timeless. And, and so even the sort of psychiatric psychotherapeutic endeavors to, Oh, we'll handle this now. We'll provide the trainings. We'll tell you how it's done. You know, never mind the fact that psychiatry doesn't even believe in spirit. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of laughable. Uh, but really, at the end of the day, you're working with ancient intelligences, and uh, you know they can they can just change absolutely the whole way you've looked at life, the whole way you've approached life. That is the power of these beings, and I think that is the I don't know if mission is quite the word, but never would that be more important than now, and especially when you know we this is very real in terms of merging people with machines, this whole transhumanist debacle and and th- this whole technological thing and then this this whatever that I, I'm off all of social media um but there's something Facebook's doing now where it's all going to be I don't know like interactive and then you go in and you have a persona and whatnot and I mean uh yeah I forget what that's called metaverse yeah I mean none of that's real None of that's real. And so it's, it's like we have this force right now that is, well, Steiner would call it Araman, for anyone who wants to look that up, this Aramonic force that is uh, luring human beings away from the natural order, away from nature, away from their own nature into this synthetic reality. And so here we have this mushroom which grows within the earth it's like really the nervous system of the earth and it is this i think sort of compilation of intelligences you know and 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 its function i think now is to help those of us again eyes to see ears to hear who are drawn to this and many are to kind of sort of call us back to what is real to what is true yeah the 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 issue of you know the organic life as we know it on earth and this sort of infiltration of inorganic whether it's you know plastics in the sea and plastics in our fish and chemicals in our food and seeds food you go to the supermarket a lot of the vegetables aren't even really vegetables anymore because of the GMOs and the herbicides and pesticides and there is this huge infiltration and I definitely feel from my own experience and from those I work with how the mushroom is constantly returning us to this state of symbiosis within self and, and the external environment and the more you, you work with it and initiate it with it the clearer things become and one thing that gives me a bit of discomfort, we've, I think we've mentioned this before in conversation, is around the synthesization of psilocybin for therapeutic function. And I'd, I'd like to hear your reflections on that. I see it as a profaning. Okay, there's two things. Because on one hand, I do see a lot of people could be, of course, helped from this. And that is always a good thing. I would say also, though, that the same uh, structures or institutions that are doing that are the same ones that have a very uh, disturbing resume back in the 50s and 60s of what was done experimentally to people, including children. Dr. Loretta Bender, if anyone wants to look that up, um, did horrific experiments on children with LSD. Um, and electroshock therapy. And so, you know, there's, that's in the background. (laughs) 
you know, I'm just always leery. And then, and then to sort of, it's reductionist. So create this sort of synthetic mushroom. It's not even, you know, the same thing. So, so, you know, again, fine. I get that could help a lot of people. And at the same time, that sort of clinical, sterile, um, sort of and the labeling that goes with all of that like that's a system that to me actually is needs the heave ho and is eventually going to be you know out out of here because it doesn't honor the spirit it doesn't honor the true humanity i think it's more than anything just a way to kind of get people back to work back functioning in this structure this commercial structure that we are all in. And I don't care if that commercial structure is capitalist or communist or socialist, whatever the hell it is. Um, it is, well, we don't even have real capitalism. We never have. Uh, but, but that's a whole other discussion. But in any case, it's not honoring of the truth of who and what we are. And, and, you know, we are a part of nature and yes, we can be a cancer on this earth, but, but ultimately nature loves us because we have, you know, and can create such exquisite beauty. And the mushroom takes us into, I think, our humanity, true humanity. Whereas that over there is, um, it's a profaning of the medicine. These guys in white coats are far from being sort of true medicine people. Yeah, I, I think it's the, the symbiosis that you can experience through and and it was similar with marijuana i think when they synthesized marijuana it ended up causing more damage than good there was people were having seizures and different things were happening yeah. and there it, it's just to have a little bit of awareness i suppose and a little bit of communication around these plants are designed whole they are designed in a way that they are they are made to interface with our bodies for healing and just to have a maybe be a little bit louder on that that we don't need to synthesize these compounds they are accessible to us in their whole form in clinical as well as you know more um, ritual or shamanistic spectrums but i think that's just something that makes me a little bit uneasy because I know when I go in and I take, I'm in medicine and I'm connected to the mycelium network and that is where I am receiving and healing and upgrading and learning. And so if you synthesize something, is that now connected to the mycelium network or what is that? That becomes something else entirely. So for me, it's a, yeah, something to keep an eye on, I think. Yeah, it's also a way of patenting something new so that certain folks can make however many hundreds of millions of dollars that they they want to make on it anyway yeah i agree i mean i'm a purist so i'm going to work. yeah yeah i want the actual mushroom thank you very much and uh yeah yeah um and then i've been I've been reflecting a lot and speaking to some people who are, you know, there is a massive resurgence in people seeking out the mystical and seeking out initiation and learning and growing back into those wisdom bases, which is just amazing. And I am surrounded by people that are pursuing these types of paths. And what has been coming up for me a lot is around the potential of the mushroom in and of itself to be an entire mystery school. I mean, it's an entire mystery school just to apprentice to the mushroom. And I know you mention that your space is basically like um, you are living, breathing mystery school through the work that you're offering with the mushroom. Yes, well, the beings, I got this term on a mushroom journey that it's a fairy college if you will. But again, see, we have to change our perception of fairy because again, it's been, this is actually, my goodness, it's been such a uh, uh, old Europe, so steeped in that understanding and that beautiful folklore and mythology and story and all of that. And now it has been, again, just reductionist, just reduced to just nonsense. 
anyway, a fairy college, like this is, this is the deep mystery. This is the profound mystery of life itself, of nature, of the inner workings of how to uh, work with nature. I have on my property and this came to me, how many people do this? So I bought three acres in rural Vermont and I have a 60 foot diameter stone labyrinth. It just came to me like a labyrinth has to go on this property. And so a labyrinth is, it's not the same thing as a maze because it's one, a circuitous route in and then a circuitous route out. And if you look at, I have a seven circuit labyrinth, which is the oldest form. If you look at that from above, it looks like a brain. And uh, Dan Winter uh, said the labyrinth is a kind of capacitor. In other words, it generates energy and it is like a vortex. And so you walk in there and you're standing in the center, essentially, of a vortex. And you're actually standing in the center of a cross. Because if you just look at how to draw a seven circuit labyrinth, it starts with a cross. And then there's L's on either side, dot, dot. And then you, you know, you can draw the whole labyrinth, but it is a cross. And, uh, and so that is a uh, part of this sort of ancient technology, if you will, and the stone circles and all of that as these ways also that we can enter uh, and, and energetically or electromagnetically commune with these other uh, intelligences and these other realms. And so that's sort of, that's sort of part of what I'm creating here, you know, but very much a fairy college and, and, uh, and then, but there's everything is, is goes with this, you know, there's the mystical and in, in terms of that deep connection, the poetry, which is a language all in its own. I mean, if we're going to write a poem or we're going to hear a poem, something just subtly occurs if within us, right? Like you just, you sort of shift yourself a little bit to receive it. Or if you're going to write it, it's not the same as obviously the way we're speaking or just writing anything. And so there's, that is a part of it as well, because it does cast a kind of spell. And, uh, and, and then also this, this law piece as well, like principles, this is why I love the maxims of law so much. And I see that as very much good because the fairy are principled. They're not just sort of airy fairy like this. No, it's, it's, I just think of those words. It's truth, beauty, and the good, you know, and, and what is that? And that is, you know, that, that is the, it's a living college, if you will, you know, to where essentially we become the college. It lives within us through our, um, seeking inwardly within the mushroom, but then also seeking through, again, sort of the older texts, the older writings, you know, what were they saying? What were they thinking? Let me sort of shift my modern mind and go into that, immerse myself and receive the beauty of those words, you know? So, I mean, really, fairy ultimately is, it's a realm. And and I think ultimately it is sort of the garden, if you will. And I think we are in the garden. We have some parasites here right now. Sometimes that happens in gardens, you know. So we need to do some <laughs> some cleaning and some fermenting, some composting. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, here we are and it's accessible. And it has never left. And this is also, they have taught me the power of the mind. You know, and if this thing gets hacked, look how hacked people's minds are. My God. I mean, it's been going on a long time, but now it's out of control, right? So then they are, they can't access that living magic, which is, it's speaking to us every moment of every day. And another thing too, part of that sort of fairy college is the understanding of symbol nature and the psyche speaks symbolically. So to recognize what's right in front of you. Cause it's, it's all right in front of us. And, and the truth is, you know, is, is right there. But if you don't have, again, eyes to see and ears to hear, you can't hear. So in other words, also, this is what I have endeavored in my little school, which is called daughters of the fairy tree. And, and, uh, and I had one year and then I'm taking this year now to figure out, you know, what, what, what I'm going to do beyond this, but was to really assist these women to be able to see in that way. 
And that, that I think is um, a major message that I would like this particular conversation to, to ripple out that this is accessible to us and we are here there are people here who you can connect to you know i'm accessible you're accessible there are more of us across the planet and we're slowly starting to bud and take root and really hold space so that we can consciously return these wisdoms and this it's this subtle interface i often have women come to me and they want to learn magic and they want they expect everything to be really big really quickly but actually it's the subtlety of being able to read and communicate and sense and see and feel in the day-to-day -day. you know whatever happens in the mushroom realm is one thing but when you come out of there cultivating that level of presence is i guess the the, the first step really the ultimate step overall yes Thank you so much for saying that, Kathy. Oh my goodness, the subtlety. You know, in our Western, not just Western, it's all over the world. You know, don't blame Western. Like it's everywhere. This, this like, just this intensity and this constant stimulation. And so the subtle is, it's not even considered. And yet that is where the magic is. And that's where you have to sort of get yourself to be so that you can connect in in that way you know so my my late teacher dr brew joy had said do not underestimate the power of the subtle that's that's where it is yeah i think that's like going to be my slogan <laughs> i'm going to have to borrow that one <laughs> oh, for sure well, Shauna, I wish that we could speak. I know that we could speak for hours on this and I'm sure that maybe at some point we can do a workshop together online and create a longer a longer segment so people can, can tune into that. Um, but for today, I think that is more than a blessing from you sharing your your perspective and your wisdom and your magic. So thank you so much. Thank you, Kathy. Oh, this was wonderful. I, I look forward to talking to you more. <laughs> Is there anything you'd like to say before we, before we close? Uh, let me, I would say to not lose faith in the good, not lose faith in people. I think really we're full of surprises and if anything, we're unpredictable and there's so much, there is so much sort of doom and gloom and demoralization going on and fear. That is a big weapon. When you can really see and realize, you know what, you're playing a game. And that's a game. And I'm not going to play because energy flows where your attention goes. And I'll quickly say uh, there was uh, the movie Merlin with Sam Neill. And there was an amazing uh, scene where he's fighting with um oh my god what is her name morgan uh the Mor morgan and, and, and not the morgan and anyway morgan Le Fay. in any case they're having this big fight scene and all these people are sort of in the castle watching and it's very 80s a lot of the uh, sort of <laughs> uh the way they would they do the special effects anyway at some point the door is closed merlin should, they're fighting like crazy and then all of a sudden he realizes like no he says to her I am just going to turn away from you. And the doors open and all the people follow suit. And he says, we will just forget about you. Essentially, we're talking about good and evil. Not that we do nothing, but simply we're not going to feed that any longer. And then she goes bananas and whatever, and obviously loses the power. Why? Because the people decide we're not going to feed that anymore. So really, and this is my focus this year, is what am I going to feed? What am I going to feed? And I am going to continue to cultivate my gifts. I am going to put my attention to things that really have efficacy to that, not just that magic, but n nature, um, which has a cure for absolutely everything. It's all in nature. It's all right there for us waiting. And so that would be for 2022, 
where, what are you going to feed? That what wolf are you going to feed? Yeah, truth, beauty, and the good, and your good gifts. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you.